I hope everybody's having a good Thanksgiving week. It's a different week for us uh, with uh, not any uh, students on campus and school not in session. So we've kind of flipped our week a little bit. We'll go a little bit earlier on uh, Wednesday and, and pretty early on Thursday, even though it doesn't feel like it's a short week. It is a short week um, to prepare for uh, a really good Baylor team that I, I feel is um, played really well at times. Uh, played really well on both sides of the ball, had another uh, up, up opportunities to win, just like we have in the fourth quarter, and I haven't gotten that done similar to ourselves. So um, it's a game that our kids know the importance of, uh, and I was pleased with practice yesterday on Monday. Kids, uh, we had a really good team meeting, talked about a lot of things, um, and our kids bounced back and had a good day on Monday. Now we just have to sustain that and uh, – make sure that uh, we're playing at uh, as high a level as we can. And, and we've got to do a great job as coaches, putting them in positions to, to be successful uh, on Saturday. And um, it was a humbling day on, on Saturday for all of us, players, coaches included. And sometimes that happens to you in this profession. Nobody wants to have it happen ever to them, but sometimes it does. And you have to learn from it. You have to grow from it. You have to hit it, hit it head on and, and be ready to attack the next day. So we'll open up for questions. Start here with Kellis. Hey, Chris, it seems like one common denominator from Saturday and the West Virginia loss that both got a little out of hand was you guys didn't start off very good in the game and fell behind early. Um, how, how much did that hurt in those games, and why does it seem that getting off the fast starts is so important right now? Well, it gives life into a young team, in my opinion. That's, that's one of the things that um, I would say is when you have uh, a pretty new offensive line, uh, a freshman quarterback, uh, a freshman running back and, and some uh, newer kids in the secondary, uh, especially. And those are our areas where we don't have a ton of experience. It, I think it's important to have some confidence built early. You saw what it did for us in, in uh, at Oklahoma or here against Oklahoma State to, to have a lead and to play with energy and emotion. Uh, and then you see what it does when you don't have that, whether it's West Virginia um, or this past weekend at Iowa State, but I'd flip it and say we were down against Oklahoma and found a way to continue to have great resolve. And, and so um, part of that is the fact that, um, you know, we didn't finish some drives early on uh, offensively and we didn't prevent some touchdowns defensively. Um, and we had a couple of opportunities to get off the field on third down on defense in that first drive. Uh, and they take it down and score, and that was pretty demoralizing, I know, to the to players and defensive staff. And then, obviously, when you get it first and goal, whatever, the four or five, you've got to find a way to punch that in there. You mentioned a little in your opening statement there, but how do you just feel about the way this team has bounced back since Saturday? Uh, they've done a nice job. And granted, we're only getting into Tuesday's practice, but um, – uh, these kids have really great resolve and, and great pride in, in, in their craft. And uh, I know that uh, we have uh, unbelievable leaders with high character, high integrity that uh, I told them they need to step up and take some ownership. We as coaches need to take ownership and they need to take ownership as players and challenge each other to be better and challenge each other to reach the standard that we all uh, expect, not, not, not on the field as well, but off the field and doing things right. And, um, I, I thought they adhered to the message pretty well yesterday. And, and maybe you still don't know, but I'm going to ask anyway on, on Malik, Elijah, and Justin. Are you expecting them back? Um, Malik should be back. Um, I don't know on Elijah and Justin. I'd have to get with, with Mindy to see where they're at. But uh, Malik's, Malik and Jalen Pickle should be back. Okay. Yeah, sorry. I forgot to ask about Jalen. Yep. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this week. John? Yeah, Chris, do you have any more clarity at this point on what you'll do at quarterback on Saturday? No, we're just going to keep working both of them. Um, I thought Nick did some nice things. Um, and uh, uh, I think it was a great learning experience for Will, especially after he got hit really good the one time and, um, and, and then had a couple of frustrating plays for him. And I thought it was a good opportunity for him to, to learn uh, from the sideline and watch. Uh, and I didn't want to get him – any more shots taken, especially when the game was in the balance as it was, where, where it was um, going in Iowa State's favor. I just didn't think that was going to help his growth either uh, by having him take more shots. And so um, both practiced yesterday, and obviously it was a limited day on Monday, but um, uh, we'll keep working both of them and, and uh, excited about uh, uh, 
uh, the opportunity for Will to b- bounce back and the opportunity for Nick to uh, build on what he had on the field. Did you give any consideration to playing Jaron Lewis in that game on Saturday? I, I didn't think at that time we did because of where the game was at. And you, you also have to realize, I think we had like 46 or 48 plays. That's not enough for me to say, hey, Jaron, go take two snaps and hand it off. So um, we need to play more plays on offense and not play as many on defense. I was going to ask, too, just on the, the front of guys holding each other accountable that you mentioned after the game, just how long have you seen some of those issues there with this team this year? Well, I, I think some of it is the fact that this is 2020 and we're in a global pandemic and life's tough. Uh, there's nothing that's normal. There's nothing that's easy. And we told the guys from the start of this thing back in June when they first arrived on campus, got sent home, and then July when they came back to campus, guys, this is going to be a tough year. Uh, a tough year to handle all this stuff. But, guys, life's going to be tough. Your life's going to throw you a bunch of curveballs over the next 20, 30, 50 years of your life. You, you, you have to be able to fight through the adversity, and you have to be able to survive when adversity strikes. And um, we continue to, to preach the same messaging throughout our coaching staff. And, uh, once again, I, I've got a tremendous amount of confidence in the leaders uh, on this football team to continue that brand of the messaging going out to the younger guys. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. Yep. Todd. Hey, Coach. I know you talked a little bit yesterday on the conference call about the transfer portal and all that stuff. Will you guys eventually get to the point where you will actively recruit people who are in the portal, or how will you handle that? Well, it's a lot of names to comb through, uh, Todd. So um, we always look at it. Um, maybe I don't, but somebody in our recruiting office does maybe every two weeks or something. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens in January when I believe it goes to th- through that anybody can transfer one time uh, without penalty. I-, I think that's when you're really going to see, unfortunately, some floodgates open. And that's not at Power 5 only. That's Group of 5. That's FCS. That's whatever you want to say because um, – kids are going to have the opportunity and then there's voices other than outside of your own football office and and football community that are telling some of these young men hey go jump into this go try this Uh, and unfortunately as people are finding out not a lot of them are leaving that portal a lot of them are staying in the portal or or dropping down to a level that's different from what they played at all those things but let's take it all still back to 2020 this is a tough year for any young man to fight through uh, whether it's an opt-out whether it's a transfer whether it's sticking with your team which I'm so excited about the guys that have because it'd be pretty easy to come in and say hey let me get out of this season and opt out in game six eight nine in the end the kids that are with us uh, couldn't be more pleased with because this has not been an easy battle. Um, forget about what's going on in the football field, all the other things, and uh, shows the true character and integrity of those kids that have stuck by their teammates. It's complicated enough to try to recruit, fill your class. You know, the kids are all over the place. I mean, what other level of complication does this add to add that kind of level another layer to the whole game well the fact that right now Todd this is how you and I would recruit if I were recruiting you we'd be on a zoom call and and that's how I'm getting to know you Um, I'm not going to your home and visiting with your parents Uh, I'm not going into your school to visit with your head coach Uh, I'm on a phone call with a parent I'm on a phone call with a with a head coach I'm on a phone call with somebody and it's it's the only way we know how right now it's the only way that's available to us But that connection's not there of any of us coaches sitting in a living room with somebody, um, sitting with a young man in in his head coach's office, whatever it may be. And that's everybody across America uh, that are going through these same challenges. And that's my fear moving forward, uh, especially what this year has done, is kids are going to choose schools all over the country with never being on that campus and never being that far away from home. They've never taken an official visit. Some have not taken an unofficial visit. And all of a sudden, um, we throw that carrot out there that, well, if you don't like it, you can just leave. And that's sometimes in the best interest of some kids. Oftentimes, and most times, it's not because you got to be able to, just like life, you got to be able to fight through some of the adverse times that you have. Uh, and, And so that's my concern for all of college athletics uh, as we move forward into 
uh, what's going to be the open open market on transfers, as well as not getting the opportunity to to build those relationships. It's Hey, Coach, um, let's look forward to Baylor a little bit. Uh, I watched most of that Baylor-Iowa State game, and Baylor was really good in the first half in Ames and then kind of came apart in the second half. But does that show that maybe the record isn't quite telling the story of what Baylor can be? Well, without question. Um, I watched just a little bit of that game, and um, they really rattled um, Purdy in the first half, and then – uh, Brock, like he does, came back and, and played really well in the second half, but they had an opportunity to win that game. Uh, I, I watched, I think it was during our open week, I watched the entire uh, Baylor-Texas Tech game, and Baylor was up two scores in the second half uh, and, and had an opportunity to close the game out. Uh, um, and credit Texas Tech, they found a way to come back and win. So that was another game that they had an opportunity. We watched before we played West Virginia – a really talented Baylor team that took West Virginia at West Virginia into overtime. We said, boy, this is a pretty physical, good football team. That Those are three losses right there that I'm sure if you'd asked Dave, they had a chance to win and could have won those, those three games. Um, and then there's TCU, I think, in Texas. Uh, but, you know, they're, they're a team that probably could have four wins right now. Um, and it, it's, it's football so strange because – you know, we're not playing at, at, at the best level for us right now, but we played at a high enough level to beat Oklahoma, played at a high enough level to beat TCU, played at a high enough level to beat Texas Tech, the latter two um, with Will at the helm. So we just have to focus on what we can control, and that's our play, our effort, our attitude, our energy, and our ability to execute. And no one in this conference – has gone through with COVID what Baylor has. I mean, everyone loses their spring football, but it's a new coach. They lost their non-conference game. They've had a game moved. Um, does that make them even a greater unknown that they might start to kind of settle in and, and get enough practice and reps under their belt? Yeah, and they had the open week before they played us. I'm assuming they have, they were able to get uh, a number of practices in, whether it's with their young guys or continuing to develop everybody. And I'm sure that's what Dave wanted to do is keep developing everybody because he's still putting in his system. And, um, and uh, you can flip on the film and just watch uh, a very fast physical defense. And um, similar to what I say about Skyler, and I, and I kind of feel the same way watching Charlie Brewer play. If he's in the game, they have an opportunity to win. And I've said this, every time Skyler steps on the field, I think we have an opportunity to win. And I, I think that same thing with, with, with Brewer. I, I think he's a really, really good competitor. I think he's an excellent football player, and he gives those guys a chance to win. Thanks, Coach. Ellis? When you went back and studied what Cody and uh, Daniel gave you at linebacker last week, I know you said depth was an issue, but when they were, you know, at full strength, what did you like about what they gave you? I thought both of them played really well. I, I did. It wasn't perfect. Both of them missed some plays uh, that they would tell you as well. Uh, uh, but I thought both of them played really hard. I thought both of them played physical. I thought both of them hit their fits. Um, the issue that we had is uh, they had to play every snap for the most part. And, uh, when you're playing every other series like they were with Eli and J-Ball in, you're able to see the game in a different perspective and you're able to stay fresh. Then you throw on the fact that Cody's a starter on every special team and we were going to keep him on a number of those special teams until we lost Austin Moore, who was the backup to both of those guys on Thursday of the Iowa State week. Austin Moore was going to play a significant role in that game at Iowa State. And I feel awful for Austin uh, because he had his opportunity taken away. Um, and so we had to flip the script on Thursday and Friday and take Cody off of all, all those special teams and put another guy in there that hadn't taken those reps uh, because we felt like we could keep him on special teams because Austin was going to be able to, to sub him out and it didn't happen that way. So um, we have this week to be able to uh, decide what – Cody's going to be on from a special team standpoint and what he needs to be off of because Cody and Daniel need to play the majority of the snaps at linebacker. That sounds very complicated. I don't envy you there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks coach. You bet. We got three hands raised. We'll finish with those starting with Ryan. Hey, uh, Chris, you know, I know so many questions you get are like, 
you know, if this was a, a non-pandemic and a normal year, for instance, like Thanksgiving, guys close to home usually are able to go and see their family and friends, and maybe the players who are from far away would come and eat with the coaches. So what uh, what's the plan for, for this year? Do you guys even know yet what you're going to do with that? Well, we better know it's Tuesday, and yeah. <laughs> Thursday's coming fast. But uh, we'll practice uh, late morning on Thursday, and we'll have a, a Thanksgiving meal for, for the entire team up in uh, our stadium club because it's a big enough space that we can have guys up there and socially distance them uh, and that stuff. Uh, and, and then because of the fact that per Big 12 rules, everybody has to test on Friday morning. They can't go home. Uh, plus, it, I don't think it's a, it's a safe environment for them to go home. Everybody will come in. Our young guys will lift on Friday morning. Then they'll get their test. We're still working through it with our administration and, and our operations people. We're trying to take as many kids as we can uh, to Baylor because I don't want somebody from, from out of region to have to sit in his dorm room uh, on Thanksgiving. That's not fair. Uh, it's been a hard enough semester uh, that we're trying to take as many guys as we can. I, I, if we can't dress them all, we can't dress them all. Uh, I'll have them on the sideline. I'll have them be a part of it because um, you're right. Normally either people would be coming to see them or they'd be able to run home. And that's just not the case this year. And then I, I know you said after the, the game the other day that, that you wanted uh, and it has to sting losing the way that, that you guys did. How much do you feel like the players have been able to use that as, as if nothing else, just a point of pride to be able to bounce back from a, a loss kind of that lopsided? Great question, and we'll see on Saturday. Um, and uh, what I saw yesterday at practice was really positive, and the, the right guys were out in front of the group, and that's something that we have talked about as coaches. Uh, we got to keep those right guys out in front of the group that – are not afraid to hold somebody accountable, hold themselves accountable, uh, and lead by example. And uh, so I'm excited to see how we respond. Thank you. Adam? Coach, at the beginning of the season, coming into this with the pandemic, you knew that games could be postponed or players could test positive and not be able to play. But you were in the situation at Iowa State to where you almost had the question of whether you're going to have enough players to play in the game and the situation that you're in. Did you in any way imagine the season coming to this at the beginning of the season? Um, yeah, I thought it, when, when conferences started canceling, I, I was afraid that we would be in the situation and we would have gotten to Thanksgiving and we'd have played four games. Um, let's, let's credit uh, Bob Bowlesby. Let's credit the Big 12 uh, and the athletic directors in the Big 12. We've done it better than any other conference. The fact that we've played eight games and you got some schools stuck on one and two, uh, it, it's crazy. And that's a credit to uh, uh, the amount of time and effort uh, every institution and, and our conference office and Bob Bowles we have put in to make sure that we have the right protocols to play as many games as, as we have. I also look at it as we were close on, on, on Saturday to play or not play. I know we have a number of seniors that I don't know if they're coming back. Um, some of them maybe have jobs. Some of them are, are, are ready to move on. I think we owe it to those guys uh, as coaches to play as many games as we can so that those kids continue to get an opportunity to tee it up and play because this is going to be the last time for some of those guys to ever play uh, football. Last one here, Derek. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned Austin Moore was set to play against Iowa State before becoming unavailable. You're going to lose a lot of seniors at linebacker, or you might lose a lot of seniors at linebacker. Is he someone you're counting on for next year? And what have you seen from him to feel that way? Well, I'm excited for Austin because he's had a terrific fall through all of the turbulence and stuff that we've had. He's one that uh, when we do our young players versus young players, shows up and does a great job, is learning our system, uh, special team stuff. He's continuing to improve in all phases of special teams. And the thing that I love about Austin, he's a coachable kid that knows he needs to improve, that knows he hasn't, doesn't, hasn't arrived, that doesn't have all the answers, that just wants an opportunity to show that he's uh, capable of playing in the Big 12. I firmly believe that he is. I was hopeful that he'd have had an opportunity. He didn't get that opportunity. And, and I visited with Austin. Um, don't let it define you. You're going to have that opportunity. You just keep doing what you're doing because we have more kids like Austin Moore. We're going to be really successful. Thanks, Coach. You bet. All right, Coach. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone.